Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You feel that way? What a joy to serve your Jesus. Amen. Amen. God's been good to us, and he has blessed us in so many ways. And so we just want to worship him and praise him and give him thanks for all the wonderful thing he has done for us. I want to read to you from the book of James. We'll read James chapter 1, verses 12 through 18. And if any, if at any time in your Christian life you think you're doing real good, you can always read the book of James. <laughs> He'll have a way of humbling, <laughs> humbling us and cause us to take a second look at ourselves once again. Amen? It's really a good book. And James, as we know, is the, or was the, probably I guess would be still the half-brother. I don't know how that works. But at that time, he was the half-brother of Jesus Christ, the son of Mary and Joseph. And um, God used him in the work of the Lord. He became the pastor of the main church in Jerusalem. And he wrote this book to the churches so that we can understand the will more clearly, the will of God more clearly for us. And so I want to read verse 12 through 18 in chapter 1. He said, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust had conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creature, creatures. And I want to use verse 17 as our text for tonight, where he said, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. And using that, especially the part where he said, every good gift and every perfect gift, perfect gift is from above. And with the help of the Lord, I want to preach about good things from above. Good things from above. Let's look to God in prayer. Actually, why don't you pray? Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for this time to be in your house tonight. We thank you for everything you're going to speak to us about. We ask you to bless the message and the messenger of Christ's name. Amen. I want to preach about good things from above. And in this passage, I'm sure many of us have read, all of us have read it more than once at least. I have four checks on my Bible there, and I started this recently. After reading the Bible for many, many years, I start putting a check mark every time I go through it. <laughs> so I can say I went through it four times within the last year or two, <laughs> right? Or however it works. But um, in this passage, he was drawing a contrast between things that are good and things that are bad for us. And there's two things that he shared. Number one, he talked about temptation to sin. And he said that the end is death. When we allow ourselves to be tempted to sin and give in to that sin, he said the end of that is death, which means separation from God. And as he said in verse 13 through 15, Let no man say when he's tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away by his own lust. And so he showed us that, and, and then he went on and said at the end, that when, when lust had conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, it brings forth death. And so there's nothing good to look forward to in the first half because 
Sin always lead to death. The wages of sin is death, separation from God. And so sin doesn't bring anything good in our life, and definitely it's not good for us in any way because it, causes, it will cause us to or cause a separation between us and God to where we will not be able to have a relationship with Him like we should. We won't be able to pray, worship, as David even said in the, in the, in the Psalms, he said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, he said, God will not even hear my prayers, right? And so sin is nothing good, and it will do us no good. And then the second thing he talked about is what we want to focus on tonight, is the gift of God, or the gift from God. He said, every good and perfect gift is from above. Every good and perfect gift is from above. And so we know that anything that comes down from God to us is good. Right? Everything that comes down from the Father of light, the Father above, and comes to our life is good. And there's two th ways I want to look at this tonight, and that is every good thing comes from God. And the second way is everything that comes from God is good. Right? Every good thing comes from God, and everything that comes from God is good because it's all coming from the same person. And so if we look at the first one where everything that comes from God is good, sometimes it may not seem that way because sometimes God may allow trials to come our way. Sometimes God may allow battles to come to our life. Sometimes God may close a door that we may thought that he should have opened or, or maybe things were working out and, and, and one way and then all of a sudden that door closed. I got news for you. That's a good thing, <laughs> right? That's a good thing. Sometimes when he closed that door, that's a good thing. So even though it may come in the form of a, a battle or a trial, it is still a good thing because it's coming from God. Now the disciples, uh, they were scared for their life when they were in the storm. And the Bible said Jesus was down in the boat and there he was sleeping. And they came to him and woke him up and said, Master, don't you care that we perish? And he, stood up and he woke up and said, where is your faith? Why are you fearful? But you see, they may have thought, why is this happening? Why are we in this storm? Why is this, uh, uh, why is the, 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 is this coming to my life at this time of my life when it seems like God is sleeping and I'm in the storm and I'm fighting everything? But the Bible said when Jesus woke up, he spoke to the storm. He rebuked it. There was a great calm to where the men marveled. They said, what manner of man is this? that even the wind and the waves obey him. And so it shows you that it was good because it inspired him to have greater faith in their life. That not only God can, not only God can protect them and keep them from things, but even when things come to them, he can protect them even then, right? Even when we looked at Lazarus, Mary and Martha had sent for Jesus, their brother Lazarus was sick. And the Bible said when Jesus heard about it, he remained where he was, you know, two more days. And then he took his sweet time getting there. He didn't rush. He just took his sweet time. And by the time he got there and he called for them, Mar Martha came and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When he called for Mary, she said the same exact thing. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And when he asked them where they laid him and, and they wanted to see him, they said, by now he's, he's thinking, <laughs> right? He, he's, he's, he's decaying. The process of decay had already taken place. It's been four days. He's been dead and gone for four days. And Jesus came right where he was and said, Lazarus, come forth. And that, that dead man came alive. Wasn't that a greater miracle? Wasn't that a more revealing of the power of God and who God is? And so he shows you that even whatever comes from God, it's good. They may have thought it was a tragedy, but God turned it into a great victory to where the Bible said later on in the Bible that people, when they came, when Jesus went back to visit Lazarus, they came there not only because of Jesus, but they wanted to talk to Lazarus also. They had some questions for him. They wanted to know, Lazarus, what was it like hearing the voice of God calling you back to life? They want to know what was it like to be dead for four days and then come back to life. The greater miracle, like I said, there's two things. Every good thing comes down from God. But everything that comes from God is good also. 
And sometimes we may look at things as a, a, an unanswered prayer, or we may look at things as a disappointment in our life. The Bible said that, that when the, the, the disciples saw this man that was born blind, they asked the question, so Lord, who did sin that this man was born blind? Did he sin or did his parents sin? And Jesus said, no. He said he was born blind for the glory of God, right? So that the glory of God should be manifest in him. So he shows you that everything that comes from God is good. Everything that comes from God is good. And, we'll, and, and, and the Bible, and that's what the scripture meant when he talked about in Romans 8, 28. Of course, he was talking about in reference to praying that we don't always know what we should pray for. But the Holy Ghost will pray through us as we allow the Spirit of God to pray through us. And also when it comes to trials and tribulation and temptation and all these things, he said in Romans 8, 28, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. And so the Bible is showing us that I'm talking about good things from above. Good things from above, whether it's a blessing that God is pouring out on our life, or whether it's something that comes to our life to teach us and to help us and to, and to make us stronger, it's a blessing. It's a good thing. If it's from God, it's good. Amen? If it's from the Lord, it's good. So everything that comes from God is good, regardless of what package it may come in. Whether it may be uh, in a battle, in the form of a battle, or, or whatever it is. If it's from God, it's good. And I want to read, I want to use this passage of scripture here uh, from um, 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 10 through 15. And now when you read this, you will, you will see that, you know, you may not quite understand it in a sense. As a matter of fact, it really was, was in a sense kind of revealed to me. In the sense that I will preach it tonight, this actually was revealed to me today, having read this so many times and not fully understanding it. But the Bible talked about the story God it was kind of towards the end of David's life, and God was angry with his people Israel for their, their sin and their rebellion against him. And the Bible said that God put it in the heart of David to number the people, number all the warriors. And he sent Joab out there to, to number them. And Joab didn't want to do it because Joab knew it wasn't right. He knew it will, it will inspire pride and, 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 and all these things and, and will cause a sin in the sight of God. And the Bible said, but the Bible said God put it in David's heart to do this. And when I began to think about it, why would God put it in David's heart? If it was wrong and it will become a sin, why would the Lord put it in the heart of David to do it? The reason that came to me today was because, you see, God would have judged that whole nation. God would have judged the whole nation. He would have destroyed many people. When Joab came back with the numbers of men that were ready for war, it was 1.3 million. And he didn't count everybody. He got tired of it and just go back and give David a quick number, 1.3 million. He stopped at that. There was more. And then that's just the soldiers, the warriors. There were others. So the devastation could have been so much greater. If God had just judged the people. But instead, he decided to judge the leader instead. Right? He decided to cause the leader to take upon him this action to where God, instead of being angry with the people, now he's angry at David. Right? Every good thing comes from God. Even in judgment, the Lord was showing mercy. And so let me read this to you here in, 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 um, in 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 10. He said, he said there that, um, and David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have, I have done, greatly in that I have done. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. And when David was up in the morning... The word of the Lord came unto the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and say unto David, Thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. You see what God was doing? Instead of judging the nation, God began to judge the leader. God, God was being merciful to Israel. 
God has been merciful to Israel, and so instead of pouring out the judgment on the entire world and the entire nation, he caused this man to do something so that he take his anger off the people in one sense and begin to judge the leader for what he did wrong. Right? It still went to the people, but it was a lesser judgment. I'm saying every good thing comes from God, right? And even when it seemed like it is something bad, and, 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 and he, the Bible says when the angel went in there, he, he killed 70,000 people. And on the surface, this seemed cruel and unjust. 70,000 people. <laughs> but if we look deeper, 70,000 is better than an entire nation. 70,000 is better than 1.3 million soldiers plus women and children, right? 70,000 is a whole lot better. Not say it was good that 70,000 people lost their lives, but I'm showing that the judgment was coming. God was rightly judging his people, but instead he chose to give it a different way, just the same way he did for us. Instead of judging the entire world, the Bible said he took his son, he sent his son into the world, and he placed, he made him, the, 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 he made his wrath to rest upon his son instead of us us right he could have judged all of us it was in his power it was in his rights to judge all mankind to condemn every man and to send us all to hell because the bible said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and it was in his right to judge us all but instead of judging us he sent Jesus he sent his only begotten son and the Bible said he made Jesus an offering for sin and he laid upon him the iniquity of us all and just like he did for David instead of judging Israel he judged David David you sin so I'm going to take it out on you and so instead of judging us he made Jesus a sin offering and boy, did he pour out the judgment on our Lord. And the Bible said he saw the travail of his soul uh, and he was pleased. And because Jesus took our place, he didn't judge the entire world. He offered salvation and redemption to us. Amen. Every good thing comes from God. Even in times of judgment. He could have wiped out the entire nation there in, in, in the book of Kings. Second, I mean, Second Samuel. As he, as he was saying there in verse 12, he said, Go and say unto David, Thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So God came to David and told him and said unto him, Shall seven years of famine? That can wipe out a nation really quick, right? Seven years of famine come unto thee and thy land? Or will thou flee three months before thine enemy? That's, a, that's pretty bad, right? The enemy have no mercy. While they pursue thee, or that three, or, the, or that there be three days pestilence in the land. That's even worse, also. Now advise and see what answer I shall return to him that sent me. And David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Let us fall now into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great. And let me not fall into the hand of man. God was getting ready to judge his people. But you see, the Bible, talk, the Bible said he, he caused David, this man, to take the punishment. He caused this man to bear the iniquity of his nation. I'm saying every good thing comes from God. Even in times of judgment, uh, he still give mercy. Even in times when he is in his right uh, to dish out judgment upon mankind, he still, he still find ways, he still look for ways uh, to pour out mercy and grace. Uh, and that's what I was sharing in relation between David and Jesus here was a type. Uh, it was a type of what God will do with his son Jesus. Uh, he could uh, easily pour out judgment upon every one of us. But he saved us. Amen. He could have judged us from the time that we became accountable and knowledgeable of our sins. When we were uh, at that age, when we know the difference between right and wrong, he could have judged us right then and there. He could have judged us right then and there. But no, he gave us grace and he gave us mercy and he led us to his son, Jesus Christ, and showed us that Jesus took our place. Jesus died on the cross. Jesus rose again from the dead. And that if we will give our life to the Lord, we can be pardoned. If we will give our life to Jesus Christ, we can have forgiveness of sin. And so when we look at God, we can see what he was saying. Every good thing 
come from above. Jesus didn't come from this world. He didn't come from man. Yes, he was born in Bethlehem as a man, but he came from heaven. He came from heaven. It was a seed that was planted in Mary's womb. He didn't start in Bethlehem of Judea. He was in heaven from everlasting to everlasting, and he came to this earth, and he brought forgiveness, and he brought mercy, and he brought truth, and he brought deliverance, and everything that we need, it came from Jesus Christ, who came from heaven. Amen. Amen. Every good thing come down from heaven. Man from earth couldn't find redemption and salvation. God had to bring it to us. Jesus had to bring us redemption and salvation. Even as Jesus told the people, he said, I am from above, you are from beneath. Right? He said, I'm not from this earth. I'm not from this world. He said, if I was from this world, he said, my servants will fight for me. My kingdom is not from this world. My kingdom is from above. And the Bible tells us in, in Titus chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, he said, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this world present world he's letting us know that the grace of god brought us salvation our salvation didn't come from man thank god our salvation didn't come from this earth god brought it to us jesus brought it to us it was a good gift that came down from heaven thank god amen thank god everything that comes from god is good amen. everything that comes from god is good our salvation came from above what about our spiritual power and authority it didn't come from man. This power that I have in me didn't come from man. Man didn't give it. A man can't take it away. Right? right? Yeah. Man didn't give it to me. A man can't take it away. This spirit that lives in me is not of man. This power that dwells in me that gives me the ability to, to live a holy and godly life didn't come from man. I didn't get it from a preacher. I may have learned it from a preacher, but I didn't get it from a preacher. I didn't get it from, from, from a family member. I got it straight from heaven. Amen. As he told the disciples, he said, go and tarry and wait in Jerusalem to be endued with power from on high. Amen. And there they were on the day of Pentecost. The Bible said they were there in that upper room waiting. And all the people were gathered in Jerusalem celebrating the, the, the feast of Pentecost. But while they were going through the ritualistic things and emotions and offering sacrifice and all those things, those disciples were up there praying. They were seeking God. And the Bible said all of a sudden they began to hear something. All of a sudden they heard that mighty rushing wind coming right into the room where they were. And the Bible said there came fire like cloven tongues sat upon each and every one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. Where did that power come from? It came from above. Amen. It came from above. Just like when Jesus was baptized and the Bible said he came out of the water. He said the Holy Ghost descended upon him in the bodily form like a dove. And he landed upon Jesus and sat on him. Our power didn't come from this world the government didn't give us this power amen it came from god he said every good and perfect gift is from above and it come down from the from the father of light with whom there is no uh, variableness or shadow of turning god's not going to change in us there's no changing in him our our salvation is from above our spiritual authority and power is from above our righteousness came from above we had no righteousness of our own, for we were all stained with, with sin from, our, from, from birth. We came into this world as sinners. We had no righteousness of our own. When God described our righteousness, he said it's like filthy rags in his sight. And the only righteousness that we could, uh, uh, the only thing that could make us righteous or impart unto us righteousness is to get it from God. It means to get it from God. And he said there in 2 Corinthians 5.21, he said, For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. I'm righteous not because of me. I was made righteous not because of my own doing, but because of God. Jesus took away my sin. Jesus pardoned me. 
Jesus washed me and purified me. Jesus created in me a clean spirit. He, and a new, he gave me a new heart, a clean heart, and a right spirit. Jesus was the one that took away that old nature, that sinful nature, that nature that, that was in me that drove me to sin. And he imparted into me that divine nature, that clean holy nature that spiritual nature in me that makes me want to do right that makes me want to pray that makes me want to go to church i want to live a holy godly life man didn't do this to me i'm not just following the teaching of a man and the things that has been taught no this is on the inside amen my holiness and righteousness is on the inside and it came from god it came from above it came from above not from beneath he said God made Jesus to be sin for us. He didn't know any sin. But when he said made him to be sin, he's talking made him to be a sin offering as they offer an animal sacrifice as a sin offering. God made him to be sin for us and an offering of sin. That because he paid our price and he died on the cross, now we can have the righteousness of God. Don't but good things from above. Our peace didn't come from this world. The peace that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. Jesus said, my peace I leave with you. Where is Jesus? He's in heaven, right? So where does that peace come from? From above. You look on earth, you'll never find peace. They don't have any peace to give. <laughs> there's a, there's a, a deficit of peace in the world. But thank God as a child of God, we can have peace. Even when the battles are raging, we can have peace. Even when, pe when enemies are rising up against us, we can have peace. Amen. We can have the peace of God. Thank God for peace. Jesus said, my peace I leave with you. That peace came from above. Isaiah said, perfect peace have they whose mind is what? Stayed on God. Where is God? God is above. When you get your mind on God above, guess what he's going to bring down to your life? Sweet peace. Amen. In Psalms 119, 165, he said, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Nothing in the law of God shall offend them. Now, if somebody hit your car, that might offend you. Right? Somebody cut you in line, that might offend you. <laughs> you have to pray it through. <laughs> but he said, when you love the law of God, right? He said, nothing in his law will offend you. And then you will have peace. When people are offended by the laws of God, they can't have any peace. When you love the law of God and you, you cherish the word of God and you allow the word of God to be in your life, there will be peace because you'll be one with the word. Amen. Our wisdom is from above. Man, I can preach about all this stuff for hours. Our wisdom is from above. This is why our thinking is different from the people of this world. Is because the way we think as a Christian, we have the mind of Christ. And our wisdom doesn't come from, from beneath. The Bible said the wisdom of this world is devilish. It's wicked. They're wise to do evil. They come up, they invent things that, 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 that promote more sin. Even, even things that are good, they promote more sin. Amen? Even things that are good promote more sin. And there's many, many avenues to sin with it because, uh, you know... The powers that be in this world, they know how to get people to be distracted and led astray. And so we don't follow the wisdom of this world. As he said in the book of uh, James, also chapter 3, he talked about it. He said, but if you have bitter envy and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. He said, this wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and of good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace to them that make peace. So everything, come to everything, like I say, and he said, I'm talking about good things from above. Everything good comes from God. And everything that comes from God is good, right? So anything good in our life is from the Lord. Every good gift is from above and it comes down from God. The air that we breathe belongs to God. Thank God for oxygen. They're talking about those people that went down to the, where the Titanic and they're stuck, they can't, they're lost, they can't be found. 
what they're talking about, their oxygen, there's only so many hours left, maybe 10 hours by now. When that oxygen runs out, they're gone. Aren't you glad that there's no sh shortage of oxygen in the world? Amen. It comes from God. The air that we breathe comes from God. The food that we eat comes from God. If God don't give rain, we have, we have no food. If God don't cause the plant to grow, we have no fruit. Right? We have no food. The food we eat comes from God. The water we drink comes from God. The material we use to build our houses comes from God. Our cars and our roads and everything, it's all God's. We brag about it and everything, but it's all God's. The things that make up our being, our body, our soul, our spirit, all God's. Our liver, our kidney, our eyes, our nose, our lips, our teeth, they're all God's. Every good thing comes from God. Amen? The sun that gives us light comes from God. The moon that guides us in the night comes from God. The rain that falls upon the earth comes from God. The snow in the wintertime is God's. They all come from God. So when we look at this, he said, every good and perfect gift is from above, and it comes down from the Father of light. I'm preaching about good things from above. My Heavenly Father only gives good things. Amen? He only gives good things, the things that are necessities of life. It all comes from Him. Everything that man needs to survive, to live, to prosper, it all comes from God. But even when it, when it comes in the form of a battle or a challenge, a closed door, a, a delayed answer to a prayer, whatever, however it comes, from above, it comes from God, it's good. Amen? So I'm preaching about good things from above. Everything about God that comes to our life. That sometimes you might have to go through a battle. There's good in that too. Amen? Sometimes you might have to lose some friends, lose some people in your life that are not good for you, that are hindering you or causing you to stress and, and, to, and to have anxiety in your life. You might have to, the Bible said there's a time to embrace and there's a time to refrain from embracing. There's a time for everything. Right? If it's from God, it's good. Is good. And so tonight, as we bow our heads and close our eyes in reverence to the Lord, I'm preaching about good things from above. Everything our Heavenly Father gives us is good. Everything that He allows to come our way, if He allows it, is good. Even though when we do not understand it, and when we cannot figure it out, and when we think it's a, it's a judgment sometimes, and we think it's God being angry at us, and, and if we would just hold on and wait in the Lord and see, that good will come out of it. It's of God. It's good. It's good. If it's of God, it's good. Every good and perfect gift that comes from God is good. Let's find a place to pray as you begin to pray and sing tonight. Father, I preach your word tonight.
God, that everything that comes from you, Lord, is for our good. Amen. Whether it comes from God, it's to do good in our life. Amen. And so uh, let's have a wonderful week. Hopefully it dries up this weekend. I think it should. <laughs> but uh, hopefully you have a wonderful week. For all of you to join us online, we pray you have a wonderful night and a wonderful week. May God bless and continue to keep his hand upon your life. And just remember to give God praise and give him glory because everything good in your life, you can trace it back to him. He made it possible for you to have it. Father, thank you for your grace and mercy tonight. We love you. I appreciate you, Lord. Thank you so much for your presence. It's wonderful to feel your grace, your presence, and to know that you're here with us. Blessing us, O oh Lord. I ask God that you will keep your hand upon each and every one of us. Bring us back at the appointed time. Pray you bless and use this message for your glory in Jesus' name.